hi guys welcome back to my channel today i am going to do a diy notebook using my cinch here from we are memory keepers a pack of legal pads i'm only going to use two i got these from the dollar tree or the delore tree as i like to call it um so there's three in this packet from the dollar tree and then also from this um paper pack called for with faith I will be um, using a couple of sheets from here. I got this paper pack from Echo Park, which you can purchase on the scrapbook.com website. So let's get right into um, our project. And I'm actually gonna use some coils, coils like these, but I'll show you guys what I'm actually going to use a little bit later on. <clears throat> and these paper packs are five by eight inches. So we're going to start with um, we're going to start with the paper pack. So let's get started. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up my paper pack and start to separate my paper pack. Now I do have one paper pack already open because I made one notebook, and there's two different ways, and I may do both ways in this one particular video, depending on how long this video is going to be. And the paper packs are separated by a piece of wood cardstock, which is eight by five. And I may need to cut out another piece of Yeah, I have some um, chipboard. I'm actually gonna cut out another piece of chipboard using this as a mock. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tear this piece off and I will trace this one. I know where I'm gonna cut later. And that'll be eight by five. I'll cut that out and then I'll show you what I am going to do with this. And this is just my um, guillotine paper trimmer. And I like to use this when I am cutting like big pieces of, sorry if I am shaking. There is this little glue. And actually it's probably not gonna matter because it is going to get covered up but it's this blue tape that you want to have removed off of here so I'm going to tear off all these sheets just like that I'm going to tear them all off and make sure that it's separated from the blue I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to hold up a whole lot of time all right guys so I have all the pages tore up from that one note um, paper notepad and then what I did was I had um, part of a half one from another paper pack. So I took 30 more sheets from that paper pack. So I'm gonna have 70 line pages in this book. And I'm gonna tell you one of the hardest things is this blue stuff right here. Getting that off, I don't know if I need a file like a fingernail file or an emery board to like scratch that off but since i am doing this for myself i'm going to be okay with it so again so there's 40 sheets in one paper pad so i used 40 from one paper pad and then i used 30 from another to make this 70 sheets all right and then what i'm going to do is use my cinch to punch holes in it and i will let's see I'll show you just a few on camera. Yeah, I will. I'll show you just a few on camera. All right, so I have my cinch here. And what I am going to do is create holes on the side here. And I'm not going to do all of them on camera, but I am going to show you quite a few. 
and it tells you here, test using a scrap sheet before punching the actual project. Do not exceed 20 sheets of lightweight paper at one time. To which I have um, already done. I practiced um, a little earlier to see that, to make sure that I was going to get it right. Now, this may shake the table, so unfortunately, I have no control over that, but hopefully it won't shake too much. So on my cinch, which I got from We Are Memory Keepers, I'll also um, put a link in the description bar down below where you can purchase your own. I am going to place my paper all the way in. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is All right, so the first thing I did was to pull the handle all the way down. So this is where we're gonna have difficulty because my camera is actually in the way. Let's see what I can do. I guess I can raise it some. All right, so I can raise it to there. So all of my pegs are actually pushed in and there are 12 pegs. Actually, let me come back down so I can show you guys that part. So there's 12 pegs here, one through 12. They're all pushed in and my guide is all the way pushed in as well. So now I am going to do my punch and this will probably shake the table and I apologize in advance because my camera is attached. going to take the paper out and then you see I have all of my holes right here now to put holes at the top of my paper I'm going to pull this all the way out and there is a button on the side here right here on the side I am going to put my paper in and have it go into the second hole there's a hole right here on the side. Let's see if we can. Where you can push this little lock in. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna push this little lock into the second hole. So that is gonna lock the paper in place. I'm going to pull the handle down one more again. Release. And pull my paper out. So now, sorry guys. So now I have all of my holes. So I'm gonna do the rest of this paper off camera because I don't wanna take up too much time. And then we'll come back and we'll work on our front and back cover. All right, so now all of our pages are punched. And now with all of our pages punched, you can see all the way through that I did a good job. Now let's select our paper. Let's put, get this out of the way. Let's select the paper that we're gonna use, get that measured, Get it taped up and let's get on our way. Those are just some stickers, some cut apart. The one thing I don't like about when they give us the cut aparts is that it's always on the back of a very nice sheet of paper that I would possibly want to use. And the only thing with this is that they only give you one of each sheet which doesn't allow for you to do much as far as a front and back cover. I don't think I realized that when I purchased this paper that there was only gonna be one, one sheet of each. All right guys, so I found a plain sheet of paper that actually matches the bluish green teal in this paper pack. So I am going to use that as my back sheet. Let's get rid of all of this. So what I'm gonna do first is, I want to measure out 
a half an inch more than what I needed. I need it to be nine inches and then six. Oh, I was doing this right. All right, I'm gonna get out my guillotine. Do my six and then I'll do my nine. And I should, I'll tell you why I am count, um, Cutting it bigger than what I actually need it. So let's just cut off this tip. Approximately a half inch border. And then I'm just gonna mark it because this is gonna tell me where I'm going to put this board back once I glue it. So for the rest of this video, I had to switch over to voiceover because Housewives of Elena came on and that is my show. So there was no way that I was gonna be able to complete this project without at least listening to the show so here we just have me measuring out on the front sheet of the notebook just the placement where I'm going to actually put the chipboard once I put the glue on the back of it and it'll just give me a marker so that I can make sure that we balance it out for when we complete the project and here is a double-sided tape I purchased this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And this tape was about almost two inches, maybe an inch and a half. Um, I forgot to measure it out, but I'll make sure that there's a link down below. And I really like it because it's thick and it gives me a lot of coverage. You just want to make sure that when you place this tape on the back of your project that you flatten it out. You'll see some bubbles right there, but I'll go back and flatten those out just to make sure when I lay down my cardstock, everything will be flat. And here I'm just gonna peel the backing off the double-sided tape so that I can get ready to lay it down on the cardstock and to be able to complete the front and this, as well as the back covers. All right, so you can see my markings there on the blue sheet and I am going to try and manage to lay down this car stock in the right place. Now, the one thing about this double-sided tape is that it sticks and it sticks very well. So before you have it touch the paper, you wanna make sure that you are in the right spot because trying to take it off once you lay it down, yeah, not so good with that. All right, and next up, I will fold my edges all around my chipboard just to make it easier to glue down and that bend gives it a little extra help i will miter the edges so i'm just cutting it diagonally that will make it a whole lot easier for the fold and i learned from youtube that there's a little trick that you can do when you miter it i didn't do it with this one but i'll try to do it on the front cover so here i'm just use, using my sorry bone folder just to press it down and then I'm just going to add some glue to it to make sure that it sticks. There's my Tombow glue. I got that from AC Moore, but I believe you can also grab it from Joann's or Michael's. Just putting it on the sides there, all four sides, so I can lay it down and glue it to the chipboard.
And so for the front cover, I'm just going to do the same thing as the back cover and I'll just finish that off camera just to save some time. Essentially, the front and the back cover are done if you want to leave it like this, but I want to cover up the chipboard, which is on the inside. I don't really want to see that brown when I open up my planner. So I am going to cover the insides just with some regular cardstock paper. And I think I'll add a pocket as well. And here I am with the guillotine once again. I have some matching blue paper that from the back left over never throw away your scraps i will do the solid color in the front and then on the back cover i'm going to do the printed cardstock paper that you saw on the front cover on the inside cover so i'm kind of mixing it up a little bit and then i will add a pocket now the size that i cut for these are just a smidget less than what the actual covers are so the covers are eight by five so I went kind of not like a even maybe one eighth of an inch, not even a whole quarter of an inch shorter because I wanted the borders from the front and back covers to actually show or bleed through. So just a smidget to your discretion. You do what you want. If you want to go a whole half inch, go a whole half inch, but just make sure it looks pretty in the end. Now we just got to get this inside matched up may have to trim it just a little bit more to make sure that I can have that border that I want all around. I think that just makes it look extra cute. What do you think? Now to get the front cover cut and then we'll be able to glue it down and move on. Now to work on my inside pocket for my front cover. And I'm just gonna use some scraps left over from the front cover, the printed. I really like that, thought it was cute. So I'm just gonna measure a little bit, maybe about an inch in. You do whatever measurements that work for you. So I think I'm gonna do an inch in from the top down to an inch away from where the notepad um, cover ends and then I'll do a diagonal cut so I'm just using the ruler just to estimate I think it is an inch I had already marked it but I think it really is an inch or you can do an inch and a quarter it all depends on your preference all right so I'm going to cut down my pocket I'm just going to do one pocket for this um, notebook and as you can see, I pulled it up. So I'm just gonna go from one line to the other line and just go on a diagonal. Now we are going to take our pocket and get it placed on the front cover, the inside front cover. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame. So before I glue that insides down to the front cover, I am going to do the pocket. And here we have some double-sided tape. That first one was a quarter inch, and then I really don't know what the second one is. I think it's about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to use that eighth of an inch around. Um, and I should have only used it on two sides, so sorry guys. It is showing me do it on three sides, but I should have only did it on one side, which is the side line the left hand side and then the bottom and not on the top and you'll see i'll make a correction of that as we go along All right, so before I take pull the tape off, I'm gonna make sure that the bottom layer is stuck on the card stock, and then I'll just pull that off, leaving the tape behind so that it can stick to 
the inside cover. And this is where we'll notice where I made my little boo-boo. See that top there? It doesn't open up so I can slide my info in. So what I'm going to do is just trim down that top. Luckily for me, I didn't press down too hard. First, I was going to put the backing back onto it. So what you see me doing now is just cutting off the top with a pair of scissors. And that worked better. So since I didn't push it all the way down and give it a hard press, I was able to lift up the top and cut it down. And I'm okay if that little piece was messed up because this book is for me anyway. And as you can see, I was able to actually insert something into the pocket. Now to do my back covering. And I'm going to adhere the insert on top of the inside cover. With this size double-sided tape, I only needed to use three strips, which was great. And I'm not going to show you how I did the back cover because it's pretty much the same as the front one. So I'll just show you this one into detail. And so there's probably like an eighth of an inch in between the three strips or just a little bit less than a quarter, maybe in between an eighth or an inch. If you want to use thin double-sided tape, you are welcome to do that. But I did not for this because it's for me and I'll be able to see just how um, this works out. And as you can see, I am using a little tool here, tool here, which is from my Cricut toolbox. And I don't even know what it's called, but it's great for pulling up double-sided tape and pulling up paper to separate. I love this tool, so I don't just use it for my Cricut projects. I pretty much use it for everything. And once we get that laid on, we are going to make sure, well, I, not we, and you will make sure that it is flat by using your bone folder or maybe a debit credit card or a gift card to make sure that it is totally flat. And then we'll head over to do the other side and then we'll put it together. All right, so we are just about finished with the inserts, and then we'll be able to punch the holes into our cardstock with the chipboard to make our covers and insert our papers. So right now I'm just getting everything straightened out, making sure that it looks good before I punch the final holes and complete the project. So here you'll see me going over the same steps that I did to punch the holes in the paper, only I'm doing it through the cardstock, which is a little bit more harder because it's a little bit thicker, but it's the same method um, at the same time. And here you will see me pull out that number four peg and place it into the hole on the left hand side and punch it down and all of my holes will be even. You have to remember to push that peg back in for the next one All right, now we are all set to put our book together, add it to the spiral to officially make it a notebook. So you see I turned my cinch over to the side where we have um, the prongs that will hold our, our wire 
and you just slip it on just like that now I left it complete I didn't cut it yet because what I want to do is I want to place all of my materials onto the wire and then see where I need to make my cut so first you want to put the pages on before you put on the covers so don't put on your back or your front cover yet you're just going to slip the note pages on make sure that they're as straight as you can get them and then you'll put the front cover on and then you'll put the back cover on backwards you see how i just laid it so you know how to flip it over and then once you do that you'll be able to take it off the ring and do the next step so i grabbed my wire cutters from my jewelry kit so that i can cut the wire where i see the first break in the wire and then it should be sized pretty well so i'm going to turn my cinch to the back because at the back is where we're actually going to cinch it together now i already have mine marked and let me just bring it up for you a little bit as you can see i'm struggling here with this little knob because i'm not paying attention to the words that are right next to the knob so it tells you to push to turn and of course i was just trying to turn it so now you want to make sure that the wire and the binding is pushed all the way in and under and then you will pull down your handle again to close it now what i just feared is that i did it a little bit too less and then i went ahead and did it too much so but this is trial and error and this is my first notebook so we're going to figure this out together And this is what it looks like from the side. I'm going to take those end wires that we cut and kind of wrap them or put them in between the double wires so that I'm not going to cut myself and they won't be in the way and interfere with the pages turning in the book. And there we have it. My book is complete. It's super cute. I'm so excited. I'm just sitting here trying to get these pages together. They were together when I started and now I see that they're not. And I don't know if it's because I sensed it a little bit too much. But I can turn my pages one by one. My little line notebook. I'll never buy another notebook again now that i can do this and i'm super excited my pocket looks nice my covers look nice i just have to work on having these pages lined up in the book but there it is i love it let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section or if you have any tips if you've made your own make sure you just drop me a comment and give me some help All right, guys, until next time, be blessed. See ya. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button before you go. And make sure you check out some of my other videos.